what the proposed leadership board might look like, uh, key differences between the existing leadership and the proposed leadership, and then what, uh, what the path forward will be, what the next steps are. Uh, so background. We started back in January with our administrative council. Uh, we met uh, right at the end of January uh, for a leadership conference or leadership workshop, and Carol Montgomery, who works for the Texas Methodist Foundation, came and presented to us uh, what a single uh, accountable leadership board model uh, looks like in a United Methodist Church. Uh, several churches have, have moved to this over uh, the course of several years now, uh, and um, it, the Book of Discipline provides us with the ability to restructure uh, as we need to. You can go ahead and show that, that slide real quick. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so, yes, the Book of Discipline gives us permission to restructure as needed uh, to make sure that we are aligned to the mission and vision of our church. Uh, we will make this presentation available afterwards as well. We'll send it out. I'm also going to send out an electronic document that kind of shows all of the different uh, guiding principles that we're going to follow as we move, uh, as we consider moving into um, this new structure in the future, uh, just so you're aware. Because there's a lot of little tiny print that we didn't realize in this kind of big space would be a little bit difficult to read. But anyways, there is the paragraph that allows us uh, to restructure as needed, just so you're aware. Um, so uh, a board restructure team was formed, and on that team is uh, Kerr and Anita. Kerr is our finance chair this year. Anita is our SBRC chair. Also on the team were Jay Putnam, our lay leader, Bobby Ellis, our admin council chair, and Pam Strunk, uh, a lay person on admin council who's in charge of our discipleship. So um, thank you to all those uh, who helped make this happen, and thank you especially to Kerr for helping put this uh, presentation together. So we, we formed after that admin council meeting. There was enough interest by the admin council after hearing that presentation uh, that we formed this task force and, and began kind of formulating um, over the course of this year what, what the new structure could look like based on, on models that we had uh, seen in the past uh, on this single accountable board. So our primary goals were uh, to review the current leadership structure and see the strengths and weaknesses of it, uh, to consider the possible alternatives and, and think about what are our future opportunities and challenges we may be faced with and what's the best way to move into the future. And so this, this is part of a discernment process, right? We've been in a discernment mode all year long from January 1. We started with that discernment sermon series, thinking about how is God calling us to move forward into the future and in the next season of ministry of our life together? And so our job was then to establish a recommendation and propose a, uh, to the admin council uh, and the members of the church, you, uh, a possible uh, alternative leadership model. So that's, that's kind of what we're looking at today. Um, so our goals when we set out were to, of course, make sure we're accomplishing the mission of the United Methodist Church, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And uh, our vision, to strive to be a welcoming and diverse church, uh, serving our community with love and through, through various means as well. Uh, so uh, we wanted to identify a decision-making structure, whether current or a possible alternative, that would ensure that the business of the church is managed in a streamlined way, frees up uh, the member time to engage, really, with the ministries of the church and our community, uh, and to empower our congregation to accomplish the mission and vision of the church. And this is something I, I've, I've said recently, too, to our, our church staff. A mission is meant to be accomplished. It's not just some uh, ethereal idea that sits out there, uh, something we might think about every now and then. A vision is uh, something that has a deadline on it, that you really attempt to accomplish. Uh, and so that's, that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that our, our leadership structure is empowered to hit ministry goals that we set forward uh, so that we are, are, are moving forward in the future, not just um, looking uh, backwards all the time. So uh, I want to turn it over now to uh, Kerr and Anita to kind of talk through uh, some of the details of what we've discovered. Thank you, Pastor Adam, and thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking around and listening to such an uh, exciting thing as how we're going to restructure the uh, <laughs> governance of the church, uh, if you go ahead and move. So be before we talk about what we 
are hoping to move towards. Uh, it, it occurs to us that maybe not everybody is fully aware of how, how we're currently structured and the way the operations of the church are currently managed. So we want to take a little bit of time to talk about that current leadership structure, which is the administrative council. So the administrative council is the current leadership structure. Uh, it, it operates under the di direction of the council chair and membership. Um, and, and it's really a conglomeration of a lot of different uh, subcommittees, worship teams, and so forth. So you see right now on the slide, uh, the subcommittees include, so we've got admin council and trustees and finance kind of as, as, as the uh, main leadership structure. And then we also have SPRC, nominations, children's, youth, adult, education, worship, uh, welcome new member, uh, many others. I, I was uh, building rounds. There's too many to really uh, speak to. So, so each of these different committees and teams, while we gather monthly to talk as a church, as an administrative council about everything that's happening, they, they really kind of operate in their own little silos. So on the next slide, if you will, um, the, the main purpose of this structure between admin council, trustees, finance, and all the various subcommittees and teams was to establish a, a managing body for the institution of the church. Uh, the, the multiple layers of checks and balances in, in a way encumbers the ministry of the church by adding multiple levels of red tape. Now, I, I, I had to step back at, at that one as an auditor. Uh, my, my, my life is checks and balances and, and red tape. Uh, <laughs> but but when, when we think of different institutions and whether they need to operate, a church needs to operate by going forth and doing the will of God not by sitting here and, and having, I don't know how many meetings a month or how many meetings a week. Uh, so, so we have to find a way to, to be efficient. And, and in the current model, we, we just have so many different silos uh, that, that sometimes it makes it difficult to do that. And both uh, Anita and Pastor Adam have talked about that a little bit here in the future. Um, the, the meetings of the administrative council, they, they are primarily focused on updates, who's doing what, uh, rather than who could be doing what. Uh, when a subcommittee needs additional guidance, of course, they come to this administrative council. That won't change. Uh, be, because of the large number of subcommittees, th this is really the, the, one of the things that we wanted to address this last bullet. Because of the large number of subcommittees and teams, we, we have people serving as many as five or six different committees where, where they're spending at that point five, six hours plus, depending on how long each of those meetings go, in meetings, talking about doing things rather than going and doing things. So, so that's kind of the, the current structure we have right now is it, it's administratively heavy. Uh, so I'm going to let Anita talk about the structure that we're proposing. Go ahead. Uh, this, this single board model is basically an alternative way to look at how we govern the church. Every, this church, like any business, has to have someone to take care of the business of the church. And the, at the present time, as he said, our admin council our trustees, our finance, those particular three organizations handle our business and we do it multiple times frequently. Um, so that's one of the things that we were looking at is what's a more efficient way to handle this business of the church that has to be handled so that we have more time to do the true business of the church, which is the will of God, and the serving of those within our congregation, within our community. Um, we're responsible, this board is responsible for judiciary, uh, to generate proactive planning and strategic goal setting. Um, and as we said, the way we've been doing that is finance has a committee and they meet, 
trustees have a committee that meets, and SPRC has a committee, and, and SPRC actually will remain as a separate committee because of the um, nature of the things that are happened. But there's a bound to be a better way. And this model has proved effective and others, which is why we bring it to you. If you'll give me, uh, it'll be basically, the committee will be formed with just nine members. Um, those mo members will include a board who, uh, chair who will also probably serve as the trustee chair because we always have to have a person who can sign their name on the dotted line at the bank or places like that to say, yes, I speak for a committee that speaks for this church. Um, our lay leader, a vice chair, three at-large members, two finance coordinators, and in that particular case, what we're looking at is to have people, uh, when nominating or making concessions, people with some extra maybe finance background or extra finance understanding or people like Carr who happens to be finance chair this year uh, who can give some, uh, bring some extra maybe business knowledge, may not be a person who has finance in their background at all but has a great financial understanding, you know. Um, and one will serve as uh, kind of like the finance chair for that year, and then another who will be under learning more about the budgeting and the finance process of the church. Uh, SPRC chair will s also serve on that committee. And then a youth representative who could vote on object on things other than trustees matters. Uh, so this structure will be, um, this group would be nominated by the nominating committee. They would serve as we do now in three-year classes so that you constantly have new people rolling on and people who, but still have people who out of experience kind of know the program. And then one of the things we have provided for in this is a one-year vacation time from, from this board, you must take a one-year leave from this board so that you can't just roll off on your three years and roll back on. Because we want to constantly, first, keep everybody fresh. Second, we want to be sure that we're serving the, the needs of this uh, group. Uh, this group will be chosen by the nominating committee, just as it has been now. Um, and one of the things we looked at, I, I had a couple of examples that came up just this week or the last few days um, that I think show how this helps. Uh, Gary mentioned um, in one of the meetings we were in when she was having her trustees meeting and they were working on all this freeze damage that she asked her to come be a part of their meeting because they really needed financial input on what they might be able to do or what they couldn't do so that they spent, didn't spend time planning to do things and then bring it to finance and them say, well, I'm sorry, but there's no money to do that. Well, this committee would eliminate that they'd have the trustees and the finance would all be talking at the same time. Um, we had a meeting, uh, a situation in finance uh, recently where we wanted to move some money out of a designated fund, a fund that we felt was not needed. It was something that, well, it was like some refresh on the Northex. Well, the Northex was getting refreshed in this makeover. And uh, that money could be better served by being in our general operating budget. Um, and that was what finance chose would like to do. However, we can't do that because we've got to now go to admin council 
and have them vote if finance can move this money. But in, under this model, we could have done it all in one meeting. And that, that's, what, that's the essence of it. It's, uh, we, um, many of the work groups, other committees, missions, greeters, usher, all these things are still, we, we're going to still have all those. We're just trying to free up more people to help do the work of the church and have less people doing, sitting in a meeting. Uh, hopefully, uh, free up Pastor Adam to spend more time on pastoral care and less time on being in a meeting. That, that was uh, some of the advantages. Help us to align our ministry to our vision and mission statement. Um, and so that, that's, that's what we are we're envisioning as we bring this to you as a church. Kirk? Thank you. So we, we outlined a little bit about each of the two different structures. Now we want to briefly touch on the key differences between the two. One thing I want to point out is these are the differences. If you're wondering, well, what if, what about, it's most likely not a difference then. Uh, we, we, we've really spent a lot of time uh, asking those what ifs and what abouts, uh, making sure that everybody still has that voice and, and that we really clearly call out what the differences are. Uh, we're gonna have some additional listening uh, sessions to, to hear you out and get some additional in input, make sure we, there are some questions we didn't ask maybe. But as far as the, the key differences that we're identifying as far as one to the other, uh, when we look at the administrative council, we, we see that it's comprised of multiple subcommittees with, with people serving multiple times over and just recurring uh, terms. Whereas this, this new leadership board would allow us to have a, a single decision-making committee, freeing up time, giving people a break, and, and also I think in giving people a break giving opportunities for people to jump in fresh that maybe haven't had an opportunity to serve on one of these boards. If we're making the same people do the committees over and over and over again, new people don't have as much of an opportunity. Whereas forcing these breaks into the terms provides for that. Uh, the under admin council, the subcommittees, uh, each work in their silos, which can sometimes cause uh, disjointed, overlapping and repetitive work. Uh, under the new leadership for, board, this would allow a more singular focus with, with everybody having a joint aim in how they move forward in the church as well. Uh, under the admin council, again, members time committed to serving on various committees, whereas leadership board, freeing up their time a little bit, you're only on one committee, now go do the work. <laughs> I, and lastly, the, the admin councils, we looked at it really at at this iteration of it focuses on administrative tasks, whereas the leadership board will focus more on fulfilling the church mission. Um, it, even in that, we were looking at how, how do we structure this leadership board and, and standing agenda items just being, how do we accomplish the mission and vision of the church? Rather than, did we make sure this administrative task was done this month? Okay, who's got this up? To, it, how do we serve the people of God for the will of God it is really the focus here. Uh, path forward. Uh, with all those things said, uh, as we mentioned, we, we've been meeting as this group since uh, beginning of this year. And, and it is our opinion and our recommendation to the church that, that we move forward from the administrative council to the leadership board that's been described to you today. Uh, in terms of that, we would like to see that done at the end of this year. So complete this year's worth of business under the administrative council, and then effective January 1st, begin with the new leadership board model. And then further, it's also a recommendation that as part of this, the SPRC, the Staff Parish Relations Committee and Nominations Committee stay separate. That there's certain confidentialities and sensitive natures of those two committees that just is better served as their own bodies. So, so those are, that's our information, that is our recommendations. I'll say 
after the, pre the morning presentation, uh, somebody walked up to me and they're like, Kurt, do, do you really believe in this new model? And, and I want to say to each of you, uh, having been asked that now, I, I came on this committee and this team as, as a uh, skeptic. I, I always do. I always question everything. It's just the nature of being an auditor. <laughs> and and I, I, I think Pastor Adam would agree. I asked a lot of challenging questions and kind of dragged my feet a little bit. I, I think this is the right move. It is a nice, it's a fresh way to take the b business of the church forward and look at it less as the business of the church and more of doing the will of God and freeing up the people to do that for us. Uh, so that's everything we have today. Thank you for uh, listening to us. So uh, just a little bit more on, on what's going to happen next. Uh, we have uh, some copies. We have some copies left of that document. We have some copies of the document uh, left that we have developed that has all of the guiding principles that we are going to live by in this new model. Uh, so feel free to look that over and uh, come up with any questions that you may have or any points of clarification or any tweaks that you think need to be made. And we're going to host three listening sessions uh, over the next month uh, so that we can prepare to you know, kind of vote in principle at Admin Council in September. Uh, so, the, uh, and I'm going to send out the dates for those in an email right after worship today, and I'll also include an electronic copy of this document in that email. Uh, so, but just so you know, there the three dates we're looking at. One is two Sundays from now on the 29th, during the Sunday school hour, right right here in the sanctuary. We'll have a listening session, and you can come bring questions and and uh, comments. And then uh, there'll be a Wednesday night at uh, 6 p.m. and a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So if you cannot join physically in person, we will have one that's just on Zoom. On Zoom. Um, so I, I want to share with you briefly a couple of stories um, that uh, Jay Putnam, our lay leader, uh, has, uh, has found uh, of, of churches that have moved to this model and have seen uh, a great, great uh, success uh, in, in moving forward with it. So the first was he spoke with uh, Jenny Denmark, who is the business manager for Trophy Club UMC, uh, and she's been there for 35 years and was heavily invested in the previous structure. Uh, and, and one of the things that I, I just want to reiterate, it, the, the structure that we currently have uh, does work. It, we, we are able to get stuff done. Um, it's just that we can see uh, ways for us to move forward more efficiently and effectively in, in really accomplishing our mission and vision. That, that the mission and vision is what it's really all about. Um, but that structure was developed in the 70s in, in a time and in a, a, a culture in which uh, preserving the institution was the watchword, uh, where it was about uh, making sure that stuff doesn't change. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, like literally, it's set up to keep uh, new initiatives from forming. It's set up to, to keep new things from happening. And so we, we, uh, we are able to, to get stuff done. It's just we think that we can do it a little bit more effectively and efficiently this way. But uh, she was uh, there for 35 years, you know, understood the system very well, uh, and, and was not really for the change. And so when... Uh, uh, when they went through it, uh, she was not sure and took her a couple of years to kind of figure things out. Uh, Jay asked her, would you do it again? And she said, absolutely. It has absolutely helped align our ministries to our mission, vision, and goals. It has made us more effective in our ministry in reaching people. And overall, it's a better management system that has freed up many people to serve in other areas. Uh, would you ever go back? And she said, no, not after once I fully understood this new way of doing things. She said, absolutely, I would not, not go back. Uh, the leadership burnout was much less. The board members were more efficient, and they knew that they, they must make the decisions and keep things moving. They could not pass it on to another committee. They had to own it. <laughs> um, they used temporary task teams throughout the year. And the leadership board, uh, and you can see this in our guiding principles, has the ability to appoint a new task team for a specific amount of time to get a specific job done, and then they're done with that job and they can move on with their lives. Um, 
and that you know the team disperses. So we have a bunch of ministries teams that currently function. Those would you know stay as they are, uh, but the leadership board has the authority to add new ones or to say, well, this one's not working real well. Let's reconfigure it or however we need to do it. And then those task teams are accountable to the leadership board to make sure that the the goals of the the ministry are accomplished. Um, and the last thing is um, it frees up the pastors, it frees up all of the people to really attend to the ministry more than just the administration of the church. Um, and yeah, so they overall, they have seen great things come of it. The, the other story that I heard was from a, a UMC church in uh, East Dallas. They, they found themselves um, dwindling in membership and were in a changing neighborhood in, in which the population around them was growing to be more Hispanic, and they needed to figure out how to relate to their neighborhood, how to meet the needs of their neighborhood. And uh, they discerned that they needed to do some things differently. Uh, they changed their leadership model to this single accountable board structure, and it empowered them to really reach the neighborhood and to do the work of, of the church and that, that church that had dwindled down to 30 grew from 30 to 300 over the course of 10 years. It really changed or turned around the life of that church. So uh, we, there's other examples of churches that have done this as well um, where maybe it's not gone as well. And, and maybe the reason for that is the, the buy-in wasn't there. there. There wasn't enough understanding of that. And so that's why we really wanted to make sure that you understood uh, all of the different little pieces of this. It's kind of simple in concept. We're combining trustees, finance, and admin council into one leadership board. Um, but it can be a little tricky to execute if we're not all on the same page about why we're doing it. And the reason we're doing it is to more effectively accomplish our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ and, and our vision uh, to, you know, to, for the transformation of the world and our, and our vision of wel being a welcoming and diverse church that serves our community with love. That is really what this is all about. And, and I really, I believe that this, this new structure will enable us to look forward into the future, to have meetings that are working meetings that are um, keeping us accountable to our ministry goals so that we can make a difference in this community. I, I really think it's going to do that. So thank you again. Uh, we'll be sending out an email with more info. If you want to grab a document, you can do so on your way out. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to listen. Appreciate it.